First thing you want to do for safer spray paint art is make sure you have well ventilated area. I'm using a box fan so you'll have to excuse the whirring noise. And before you use the spray paint, start with acrylic. You're going to want to cover up as much of the canvas as you can so that you don't have to worry about over spraying, putting out too many fumes. So I've got yellow and green here with black around the outside for the uh, outer space portion. Start with your lights, mix it up, see what you get. You never know, I probably put a little too much of the uh, phthalo green, but I can always go back over that in a second. I try to spread out as much of the paint as I can to start, and I don't touch the black because that will just consume everything. What I'm going to be using to cover up is about this big, so I want to make sure I cover up as much of the outside with green as I can, or the uh, centers, as much as I can with green. I'm going to add a little more yellow just to give a little pop and flare. I'm just using Liquitex basic acrylics. Easy, cheap, quick to put on. Give it a little more flare. I have not done a green planner in a while, so this will be something different. And then here's a trick of the trade that I realized. I don't even know if it's a trick of the trade. Is texture. You take a rag or you take newspaper and you dab this on like that. I know it doesn't look very appealing right now, but it's going to add more texture to what you're trying to create, make it look much more realistic with less effort on your end, especially if you don't do so well with the um, magazine or any other technique that you do to create texture. It helps a lot, kind of saves you some time. Now here, I'm going to blend the black in for the space. If you're doing what I'm doing with acrylic, you are not going to want to be cheap about this. You're going to want to make sure you cover every spot. First of all, it's less spray paint. Second of all, I've noticed on um, when I use paper that it sometimes the spray paint does not go on evenly then. So you don't want to avoid having to go over and touch up again with more spray paint layers. The less you have to do, the better. So make sure you cover it in its entirety. And now I'm just going to do a quick blend over in the planet section because this I don't want to lose much of this because I want to keep that and that is a heavy dose of black now I can also try with my rag last ditch effort here just to spread it out a bit not doing too great a job that's okay I can just add more yellow just to kind of create a little bit of a lighter area. If you don't want to be fine, wash your brush, you can take a fresh brush so you don't have to worry about all black. I'll this one and just try to spread it out a bit. Probably better not too much, but that's okay. And you just a lighter black so it's less of a heavier edge to deal with. That's good enough. It's not enough to cover this, but it's going to help you a lot very soon. Now, next step, let it dry if you don't want to waste time uh, in between. Break out a heat gun. That's what I'm going to do now. This gets really hot, so just don't touch the metal tip and let it go for a little bit. I just go on high heat. And you'll see the gloss start to vanish over time if you're looking really carefully. And any place that you really uh, went impasto style, getting really uh, layered with the texture here in the middle, you're gonna wanna make sure you hit that up a little more. Just make sure you keep an even flow so you don't end up burning your canvas. And I'll do this for another minute or two uh, before I work on the spray paint. All right, you can see that's a little bit different uh, level of gloss there, it's reduced. I don't like how small this is. I'm still looking at the size of what the planet's going to be and seeing how small this is, and I don't want to fight against the spray paint and neither should you. So now that it's dry, I'm not going to be mushing around the black. I'm going to put a little more of this green around the outside just to create a little better transition. And I'm not afraid to hit it up with the uh, hit it up with the uh, the heat gun a second time just to be on the safe side. I'm not concerned with this down here as much. Um, this is going to be where the shadow is because I want to make this the highlight. This is the shadow of the planet. So I think that it should look fine by the time I'm done with it. I'll throw a little different color yellow on here. It doesn't hurt to change up the type of yellow or green you're using anyhow. 
I actually like that when I add a little bit of a difference to it and you can even just, if you feel like you made a mistake, you can just add this in here. Actually it looks a little less awful to my to me at this point, so <laughs> I didn't like that green to begin with. And I can just go back in with the rag and dab it to make a little more of a texture. I'm basically doing the job I was going to do with the spray paint ahead of time. A little less work. And the more you do, the better. I want to save as little time spray painting as possible, but I want to get that nice finish that you achieve with the gloss and with the transition that you can do with spray paint. So that actually, that's not bad. And that will definitely cover the space of the planet and then some. And again, just hit with the heat gun quick. That won't take long. And then you're ready to do the spray paint. Here comes the fun part, the spray paint. Now, I got plenty of room to work with my planet here. The first step is to create the texture and the shadowing of the planet. After that, we're going to cover it up with the uh, container, the frisbee actually, and then we'll create the outside space region. The first part I do with, since I have acrylic here, I want to keep this, and so I want to preserve that and not just completely cover this up. I'm going to use a clear coat. That way when I pull off some of the layers of the spray paint, uh, the clear coat will help act as a barrier and hopefully I'll get to still see some of this. Um, at least the texture will still remain. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a complementary color. Now I'm going to be going with two colors for the sky, or rather for the space. I'm going to be using a green and a yellow. Since there's more green on this, I'm going to go with yellow for highlighting. I'm going to save the green for uh, creating some uh, nebula effects in the background. Then I'm going to hit up black on a curved edge. You want to hit it harder on the outside and kind of pull away with the spray paint as you taper off here to create the effect of a shadow. Um, I don't like creating a sharp line. Some people do. I prefer a nice gentle transition. I think it looks more realistic. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do it all in one step here. I'm going to clear coat. All right. And then I'm going to, I'll talk it through clear coat. Then I'm going to add the color, uh, a little bit of black sprayed over with some yellow since it's mostly green already. Pull it off with our, uh, with our paper. Uh, you can use plastic or paper. I, I started using paper just because I ran out of plastic. I think paper hopefully absorbs a little more um, and it'll create a better effect. Hopefully more things show through from underneath. Then the black shadow, you can choose like I do oftentimes to then completely dry it. A lot of times if uh, you put this down on here, you pull off, you're going to take off some of the paint and you might have this really sharp line that you don't want. I don't like that line, so you will see me start to um, cut away and do uh, more heat gun because I don't want to lose the nice lining work that I've done um, when I do the space on the background. All right, so let's do the first part here. You can wear a mask like I usually do uh, just to help out. I have the spray, I have the box fan pointing away right now, shooting out of the garage so that all the fumes blow away from me, so less that I inhale, which is the whole point of this, doing the acrylic and everything. So you hear me all muffled up. So here we go. Clear coat, I'm gonna spray it evenly so there's no weird effects later on. Then we go for the color. All right, hit up some yellow. Not too much. Then we go with the black. And here we go. I crumple up. I like to dab it. I can see the texture, which is awesome. If I see there are parts I don't like, I can always add more yellow here and pull off to create better effects. And then we're going to add the black shadow. So here we go. I'm going to spray heavier here, taper off. I want to remember that I'm going to end up making sure this is where it is. You don't have to go overkill. So right about there is fine. Remember to curve it. And 
And that's it. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to come back for the second step. Okay, so this is basically dry at this point. It is ready to uh, hold the Frisbee without uh, pulling up paint for the most part. Uh, this part is the fun part, but you also have to be aware of keeping a steady hand for this. If you put down the Frisbee and you just spray like this with an even hand, you're inevitably going to miss when you have the Frisbee here and you shoot this away, it's going to go right over and when you pull the Frisbee off, you're going to see this giant gap that you miss and you're going to get these really lopsided looking planets. So when you do this, you either walk around, which isn't the best idea if you walk right into where the uh, paint is, the spray paint's going with the, with the fan, um, or you can just angle, just be aware that it might screw up your can a bit. So just, I like to just kind of angle to the side and do a quick flick around as I'm doing this. Also important with the container, really press down firm. Since I'm using a canvas, it does have a little bit of a give. I'm going to want to make sure I really keep an even hand. I should be wearing gloves. That's the only thing I'm doing here that I'm not doing that I recommend you do. Um, and I want to be aware too that where I saved time with not spray painting here, I don't want to put this too low, obviously. You want to make sure you have the, that shadow covering. You don't want to have suddenly a bright spot sticking out. I could add a little bit of white here. I'm not going to. Some people do. It looks nice. I already feel like that's a little bit of a, it's highlighted enough. I don't have to uh, add white to it. It also can kind of really reduce the brilliance of your planet. So if I put it right about here, I know that I don't, and I don't like that up there either. So just, you know, you might have to do some retouching. Um, right there is just about fine for me. It's not quite perfectly centered, but it's good enough. I'm going to, again, I'm going to hold down with my finger here. I'm going to angle toward the edges, but you have to push down so that way you don't end up squirting paint underneath and losing your planet. Give a nice even spread. You don't want to overglop it because then what's going to happen is you're going to have these uh, puddles and pools forming and it starts to drip and slide and it looks like a mess. After that, you're going to see me hitting it up with some spray. Um, I do like when people put the lines through them. Um, it's fun, but I don't like to make a sharp line. I like to create more of a more of like a gaseous look. So I will pull away from this and then I'll do kind of like what I do for uh, neon work uh, where I'll add multiple uh, lines, like different levels to kind of break it up. And then I'll do like a little bit of like a spritz just to make it look like there are shinier parts of the gas. Kind of like what people do for stars. I don't like doing the stars. Again, I think it kind of like looks cheaper uh, when it actually does dry. Um, if you've seen people's videos, you might think, oh, it looks great. When it dries, trust me, it doesn't look as good. <laughs> it, it, does, it does become more translucent. Um, it doesn't have that bright opaque color. And if you get a few that look too big, it kind of ruins it. So I go with the gas look. Um, it looks funner. So here we go. I'm going to do this all in one, in one go again. You'll hear me talk through it again. Sorry for the talking, uh, but that's the whole point of this, I guess. So again, start with black. All right. Then I'm going to work my way through, cover it up completely, add the gaseous look pull it away and voila, it should hopefully look halfway decent. So here we go. Push down again. I sometimes move my finger. Why it's good to have a glove, but well, I'm already halfway through, so we're just not gonna do, we're not gonna bother. So I'm gonna get the edging first. That's the most important thing. Again, I wanna kind of make sure that I get those edges there. The same is true for the gash part. If you don't want to completely cover it up in black and you know you're gonna put the nebula stuff down, then well, you don't have to go crazy with it. That's good, that's done. All right, didn't take too much. You had black there already. Now the fun part, I'm gonna do yellow wide spray. I actually have a different cap on this one anyway, so it works out nice. This is a, this is a fat cap I have on because, well, my, <laughs> some of the Montana ones don't work so good uh, and they clog up easily. I can already see a huge mistake here where I sprayed like this and I see a giant gap there, so I'm gonna go like this. And that might have to do with the acrylic too. That's okay. I'm going to add a little more green there, and I already create a little bit of some star look there. I'm going to just gently go like that, and kind of like what people do for the stars, but I prefer to go color because that way, if it's too much, you can always blame it on just the nebula look. That's basically it right there, all right? When I pull it away... You're going to see a slight issue here probably, but nothing too terrible. I'd rather point out my flaws. And hopefully the shadow is good. You can, I, this is, wow, this is really matted down there, so that could be a problem. Something about this is sticking like glue. If I can even pull it off. There we go. All right. Not too bad. 
you can see where this issue was here. I think that was actually the acrylic. There's some issues with acrylic. It's not terrible. It looks pretty good. Um, I can show you the texture. There is texture in it. There are parts that I would definitely actually, probably I can go a second pass over this later on. You can see the texture there catching the light. Uh, it looks really cool once it's dried. I've tried using different techniques with acrylic to really add extra texture. Um, you can use one of these things to add a little extra texture to the acrylic beforehand if you really want to glob it up and go really impasto style. This is not the most textured I've ever made, but it does look pretty cool. Again, if you want to go back over it after it's dry, and right now I have my mask off and I barely feel any fumes, smell any fumes. Um, you can see issues like that there. I, most people probably wouldn't even bat an eye at it, but I do get particular. I might even go over with another color uh, because this part is still there. You're gonna see that sometimes, especially if you do what I do with the acrylic. Just lay it back over. Make sure you wipe this though, because you do have a little bit, I, that was sticky as can be. Um, you just put it back over gently and just loosely go. Just make sure you get a nice edge so you don't get too much of that sharp line there. That's the thing I was talking about right there. That's the part where some of the paint got pulled off. Um, something happened there that made that was my fault at some point in the process but nothing too bad so hopefully that helps uh for those of you who like doing these or like watching these and want to do them um this hopefully gives you some insight into how people do it so quickly and easily um i can do this a lot faster probably in a minute if i wanted to if i didn't take the time to dry it and do the acrylic but i'd rather do it safer and hopefully make it look a little better i think of course there's paint on the side here i never dried so I'm still learning too, but hopefully that helps you in your process.